So we recently went through one of the biggest IT outages in human history. So what does this mean for the cybersecurity and IT job market and hiring trends moving forward? Okay, so by now you've most likely already heard of what happened. Basically on July 19th, a CrowdStrike update were basically causing Windows computers to crash with the blue screen of death. It was basically due to a faulty channel file, which basically caused every Windows machine that was impacted to be stuck in a reboot loop and never actually start. Now the workaround to fix this issue was pretty simple. You basically boot in safe mode and then delete the faulty file but this one issue caused 8.5 million Windows machines to go down, and that is a pretty hefty outage. And based on this Forbes article, the cost of the CrowdStrike incident is estimated specifically just for Fortune 500 companies to be at $5.4 billion of losses. That is a lot of money. I know for a fact that many, many small to medium-sized companies have also been impacted by CrowdStrike, but their losses may not be reflected in this number. Airlines were out, hospitals were down, people couldn't get a hold of emergency services in certain places, employees weren't able to access any of their work environment. So basically you get the gist, a lot happened and it made a very big impact in the IT space. Many, many IT and cybersecurity professionals were working on this incident, working late nights and over the weekend. And even now I'm sure there are still IT professionals who are working through this even weeks after the incident, especially if they have very complex IT infrastructure. All right, so now that we've talked about all this, what does this incident mean for IT and cybersecurity hiring and how is this going to impact the job market? Some people are saying that it's going to cause hiring freezes because companies are focusing on internal issues that may have also risen from this incident. There is a huge domino effect when one of these big IT outages happen. So even a few weeks after the incident, companies are still going to feel the after effects with any new issues that crop up. Other people are saying that companies are going to really put the pedal to the gas on hiring for IT and cybersecurity professionals, considering the number of companies that realize that they are pretty understaffed, which I would say from what I've seen, many IT teams and cybersecurity teams are understaffed primarily because of budget restraints. And I really think that this incident was a wake up call considering that most people don't hear about the big cybersecurity incidents. Sure, they may see something about ransomware or, or a DDoS attack, but this CrowdStrike outage impacted hundreds of millions. It basically brought the world to a halt because so many large companies were relying on this specific vendor for this specific use case for their security services. Basically, this issue showed how important and fragile the overall internet infrastructure is and how one company can impact hundreds of millions with just one little bug or issue. I'm sure we could have a whole separate conversation on the entire software development lifecycle of the lack of QA that went into this faulty update or faulty channel file, but I do think that really shines a light on how things like this can fall through the cracks, even if you're a well-established cybersecurity company like CrowdStrike. Okay, so these are the two things I think are going to come out of this when it comes to cybersecurity hiring and, and job market trends. Firstly, I do think that this is going to impact the cybersecurity and specifically the IT hiring trends in the job market. Since the incident happened so recently, there aren't many specific stats on this yet, but just taking into consideration what happened after previous cybersecurity incidents. Okay, so here's the answer you guys have all been waiting for. Will companies start hiring more cybersecurity talent after a cybersecurity incident? I wanted to refer back to previous cybersecurity breaches that have happened in the past and how companies behaved after those incidents to see whether or not those incidents increased hiring probabilities. And I found this recent working paper from Stanford University covering exactly this topic, luckily enough, specifically on cybersecurity hiring in response to data breaches. And while this isn't necessarily a data breach, I do think that a security incident that is as big as this will likely follow similar patterns. So specifically based on their research, they found that after a cyber breach, their data shows that the leading two to three quarters after a data breach has been announced is typically when the cybersecurity companies will start hiring hiring more cybersecurity talent. These hiring patterns peak around three quarters after the security incident has been announced to the public. Now you can also compare this data to the second panel specifically on non-cyber breaches. And you can see that there is definitely a much sharper incline of cybersecurity hiring that happens after a data breach. One thing to note from this research is the fact that hiring doesn't immediately pick up right away after the first quarter when a data breach is announced. It's more so the quarters after the incident that have the biggest increase of cybersecurity hiring. So based on this research and the overall trend that I've seen in the cybersecurity and IT job market just in the past few years. I also personally think that there is going to be an increase in cybersecurity and IT hiring in the next few quarters, especially for companies that are already understaffed. And another thing I want to discuss here is the cybersecurity poverty line. This is something that Allison Miller, former CISO of Reddit and currently the founder of Cardamency Labs talks about a lot in her newsletter and LinkedIn, but it's essentially a line that distinguishes companies that can afford certain cybersecurity tooling and third-party vendors and all the fancy new tools that you would want your cybersecurity team to have, but 
not every company can afford that, obviously. So there are a lot of companies that are small, medium, maybe even startups that don't have the budget for a full-on cybersecurity team. So maybe they have an outsourced SOC, or maybe they have a CISO that is basically the entire cybersecurity team, or maybe they have a cybersecurity team, but don't have the budget to make investments on cybersecurity tooling, on a nice SIEM, on endpoint detection, et cetera. Personally, what I think is going to come out of this is that many smaller companies who may or may not have been impacted by the CrowdStrike incident are going to start looking at where they're vulnerable to certain security incidents. Even if they don't use CrowdStrike, this incident really acts as a wake-up call to every person who works at a tech company or owns a tech company or runs a tech company to really think to themselves, how likely are we going to be impacted by the next large scale incident that happens like this? And my hypothesis is that smaller companies are going to be faster at making those hiring decisions, but they may also be hiring for specifically someone who is senior and has gone through multiple incidents can set up an incident response plan because how many startups have an incident response plan that, that is thoroughly practiced, thoroughly walked through to make sure that it actually makes sense and aligns with the team. For larger companies, this hiring may be slower but I do think that it's also inevitable. And of course, not to mention hiring more IT professionals who are actually doing the hands-on work when it comes to messy incidents like this. And if you're watching this video interested in IT or cybersecurity, I do think at least right now, the IT job market is definitely going to be a little bit easier to enter considering that it's definitely more entry-level than cybersecurity roles and the fact that there's just more entry-level IT roles compared to entry-level cybersecurity roles. If you're looking for hands-on IT training, I'd recommend checking out Course Careers. Their IT course is taught by Josh Matacor, who is another YouTuber that talks about IT cybersecurity careers, and he started his career in IT before transitioning into cybersecurity and made this entire course from scratch for you to learn all the fundamentals that you need to start your career in IT and hands-on project experience using Azure and popular IT infrastructure components so that when you finish the course, you're already ready for that first job in IT. If you're interested, you can also get $50 off the entire program using the link in my description. And the course also includes a free introductory course to decide whether or not it's right for you. Right, the second thing I think is going to happen in terms of cybersecurity job market and hiring trends is really going to be internal. So this is really going to come down to internal training, specifically on incident response. How many cybersecurity teams actually have a dedicated incident response team, especially if you're a smaller to medium-sized company? I think there's going to be a lot more emphasis put on cybersecurity training. This is going to be org-wide, but it's also going to be around the IT teams, the cybersecurity teams, SOC, incident responders, anyone who is working on the ground during a security incident. Companies may also be hiring specifically for incident response professionals and SOC analysts on top of cybersecurity roles and specifically for more on-call cybersecurity professionals. For example, if you have a small team, you may be doing rotations for on-call for those incidents that pop up in the middle of the night, similar to CrowdStrike, especially if you're not working for a big company that has a follow the sun model with, with teams in Europe and Asia and Australia and the US. Companies are going to implement more incident response training, more on-call rotations if they haven't already, as well as potentially hiring someone in a different region or time zone to be able to keep up with security incidents on the other side of the world. And by the way, if you're looking for a cybersecurity bootcamp, the one that I recommend is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp that has a job guarantee if you qualify. And basically, if you don't find a job within a certain amount of time after graduating from the bootcamp, you get your full tuition and refunded. So it basically takes away the risk of applying for a cybersecurity bootcamp. Springboard also prepares you for the CompTIA Security Plus and hands-on cybersecurity training through technical projects, as well as career coaching and mentorship. If you're interested, you can also get $1,000 off the entire bootcamp using my code with Sandra through the link in my description. And I've also recently interviewed a graduate from the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp and how they basically went from a teacher to a cybersecurity professional through this bootcamp. And I'll link that interview down in my description if you're interested in checking it out. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this video was insightful. Let me know your thoughts on this. I know the CrowdStrike outage basically took over the world for a little bit and many millions of people were impacted. And with that, I know that companies are keeping an eye on this and wondering how they can prevent themselves from being the next CrowdStrike or starting the next biggest IT outage. This is one of the biggest reasons why I think that IT and cybersecurity hiring is going to increase in the next few quarters. I would love to hear your thoughts on this below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions and don't forget to join the discussion on our Discord linked in my description. Feel free to connect on LinkedIn for more real-time updates. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.